it was a it was a struggle before you got here because I don't know why I had a little mic and headset it wasn't working so <laughs> it's whatever we got sound now but All right. nice to meet you man you excited uh, yeah uh, uh, Ada, Ada, Ada? <laughs> Ada it's it's a lot different from Cleveland I'm not gonna lie people actually hold the doors open for you here in Cleveland they shut them behind <laughs> Uh, they just walk. You're, you're not, not even there in Cleveland, Cleveland right? Um, you're just another person on the street. But so, so I'm from Sandusky, Sandusky originally, right up near Cleveland, Cleveland area. area. Oh yeah, I know Sandusky. Yeah. So you probably yeah, been to Cedar Point probably more times than you could count. Oh yeah, well, well, I grew up. Reading, that's, that's my backyard. backyard. That, that was our babysitter growing up. <laughs> yeah. Rode every like. My mom would be like, "Go ahead, get out of here." You know, we'd walk down to the ferry, take it over to Cedar Point. Mm-hmm. And you're all day, you know? Yeah, you guys probably, uh, did they do, like, the little discounts where, like, if you were, like, uh, like, you lived in a city, they just give you, like, a little card and you could go, like, as many times as you want? Yeah, yeah it, it used, used to be, like, 50 bucks, bucks the whole year. year. Yes. And, like, your little, 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 little ferry pass, which, which would take you, like, downtown over, over to the, over, over to Cedar, Cedar Point, Point was, like, 15 bucks. bucks. Yeah, so for $75, you're good for the whole summer. For the whole summer. Again, my mom didn't need a babysitter. She just let us go, you know, give us five bucks, you know, and... Mm-hmm. Go over there, eat lunch, lunch and all, all day over there, there and the rides. And Cedar Point was, was a fun place to be. Even if you got yeah. tired of the rides, there's always people coming through. Like, we had to drive like two hours to get up there, but like it was always a good time for us. We yeah. we still had to pay missions, so yeah. it is what it is. Uh, so there's kind of three rules. I guess two rules now. Two rules for the podcast: no cussing. Uh, yeah. That's more for me than anyone else. I cuss a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no cussing. If you do slip up, it's fine. Like I said, we can edit whatever. Like post production is amazing. <laughs> but uh, what was the second one? Oh yeah, you can be, you can definitely be too quiet, but you cannot be too loud. Because when I'm doing the whole post editing thing, like if you're like really quiet and I'm talking up here, I have to pull yours up or pull mine down, and it gets really annoying the whole time doing that for the whole conversation so if you're too quiet we'll just stop and i'll tell you like hey uh, speak up now if you stutter if you say something you don't want to just say hey can i redo that pause for a second and then say whatever you want to again and i'll just clip out whatever like post-production okay. magic happens what if you right. don't want won't make it so i let me pull up my list boop boop Uh, so, I guess a good place to start is just kind of introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Joe Miani. Uh, graduated from Ohio Northern in 1997 with my, my, my four year degree. Mm -hmm. um, wrestled all the way through school. Uh, four, four years, years on, on all the way through. through. Uh, graduated, graduated from Sandusky St. Mary Central Catholic, Catholic in 1993. 1993. Yeah, Coach uh, Beachler. Say, so Coach Beachler was telling me you did pretty good in wrestling. Uh, yeah, yeah, high, high school. school um, you know, you know we, had we had a small ditty program named Paul Panther Amateur, uh, Paul Panther Panther Amateur Wrestling. wrestling. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my class was, was the first one of those. those. And then Sandusky St. Mary Central Catholic became a little bit of a powerhouse, Division Three. And then those following years from, from that, that little bitty program. program. Yeah, you started it. And you guys started it. Well, yeah, yeah, I was in that first kind of class. class and our class was kind of the leaders of that. And um, it ended up being a great program. program. Uh, solid. Uh, a lot of expectations in high school. school. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not that, that I didn't enjoy high school wrestling. wrestling. Uh, I got third my freshman year at 103. So after that, I was expected to win it multiple times, you know? So that, that, that burden, burden that, that pressure was always there, there in high school. school. Yeah. Um, I didn't have that in college. And so the college wrestling, I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. and, and when you enjoy something, it's, something, it's much easier to, to dedicate the time, the efforts, yeah. and the things you do for college wrestling. You know that. Yes, anything so, you enjoy life, it's easier to be good at. Kind of like, even with work. Like, if you enjoy your work, uh -huh. it's easier to be good at your work. If it's just a job, then it sucks. So I'm with that logic. Now, yeah, Dan, and that's, that's literally, literally the basic logic of how I just constantly improved in and enjoyed more and more college wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, but it made it made the other dedications easier because I was enjoying it, and um, you know I was pretty disciplined. So I was just kind of one of those beachler kids, and you know I 
I knew there was a lot of things that you could get into. The college would take you away from from books and from the mat. Yep, there's there's negative influences, but I was I was kind of one of those straight nosed kids, you know. So, and there was a lot of things that played into that. My first year was like that 95, 96 team when we were just studs. I mean, we we played the 95, yeah, 95 national team. That was, that was all, all my teammates. teammates. Like, yeah. I, I named every match, you know, because I just remember being there. there. Mm-hmm. We qualified half, half of our team for the NCAAs that year. Half of our team. That's five like, ten. And, and, you know, I remember we were, we were close to number six, six number seven, seven that year. year. Mm-hmm. Get, get seven guys. That was, that was like kind of our goal going, going in. Um, but, you know, those were really iron sharpened iron teams. Yes, I I believe that a lot. In 96, we kind of lost a lot of the guys, either to injury or through graduation. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you know there, there was, was a couple of us there. there. But so, the, you know, then I went from having a really strong room to kind of a really young young team yeah, where I was kind of leader at all times. That was like the rebuilding um, period. The rebuilding period, yeah. I mean, that was a couple of those times where Beachel wasn't 500 in his duels before that. You know, he was over 500 on all of our OAC duels and things like that. But, you know, we were a young, young team and then eventually – a couple, a couple of years, years even after, after I was done, done you know, you know, we got the ball rolling, rolling with some good, good, really good kids, mm-hmm. and we came, came back, back to, to, to more prominence. prominence so. So. Awesome, man. Now, do you have family? Yeah, yeah so, so my, my, my mom and dad, dad live in Sandusky. I'm, okay. I'm from Northern Ohio. Uh, uh, I've been wrestling right there in Sandusky between Cleveland and Toledo Boys. You know, we're hanging a lot. The benefits of that is is in that youth time frame, you know, we ran into St. Ed's and St. Ignatius, some of those really powerful powerhouse mm-hmm. programs. And then another thing now, because I'm in youth sports, is those youth programs back then, it was very, um, there was no egos. Coaches didn't have egos. It was about the kids. It was about growing the sport. There wasn't uh, financial needs there, you know. Uh, coaches, coaches never, never felt like, hey, I was giving up my time away from, away from my family, so I should be compensated for that. that. It, it was like the coaches, coaches I had growing up in youth would give, give you the shirt off their back, back the shoes. shoes you know? Right, that's what I grew up they with. They didn't want anything, you know what I mean? And but now, now I see a different side, side of that being a coach now and having the young kids. And I try to be the old school, but I notice everybody doing it the new way. Yes, yeah, I definitely noticed the same transition because when I was growing up, like, my coaches were just, you know, whatever college wrestlers, they just wanted to, like, be a part of the sport and help the next generation get better, yeah. you know, maybe st- do a step above what they did. And they... Yeah, you're good. Sorry. So they just wanted to do, like, they just wanted the next generation to get a little bit better, a little bit better, you know, continuously improving the sport. So I definitely recognize, like, what you're talking about, that transition where, like, now it's almost about your name. Everyone has like a club team named after them. It's not about the sport. It's about right. their technique and them as an individual. So it's almost harder to find like these tough teams, these tough whatever programs because you have to pay so much money. I was I'm not going to name names, but one of my friends, he's starting his own gym and he was looking and like recruiting a bunch of uh, like top tier wrestlers to have a camp with him. And the one who was at it, you know, one of the best in the country, he was talking to him about, like, what his rates were, and he's like, yeah, it's about two grand a camp, and I was like, no, and it wasn't even, like, the whole camp, it was, like, three hours, three hours yeah. or two grand, I'm like, holy goodness, no, <laughs> I'm yeah. sure he has a lot of tips and tricks, but I don't have two grand for you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. But I, so, so down here, here you know, there's, there's their, their, their select, select, there's, there's in North, North Cincinnati, Cincinnati and South Cincinnati, Cincinnati or, or downtown, downtown Cincinnati, Cincinnati and, and you know, you know, there's, there's we're, I'm, I'm kind, kind of, of in between the areas, and, and uh, you know, we ventured, we ventured out through my son uh, to both areas, and it, it's, it's just hard. I mean, I, I understand it, but I don't want to be a part of it. You know? Yeah, and uh, for, for me, I'm, I'm very honest about it. About it. You know, I'm, I'm, I, if, if I don't like it, it I just kind of call out, and then if they don't like me, they don't like me, kind of thing. Yeah, I feel that. That's what's been the last two years of kind of youth, and it's gotten to the point now where it's like, okay, well. I just, I just started, started my own little group. group. I traveled, I traveled with, with my son and a couple kids, kids that are really strong, hard workers. workers. Um, and, and I, don't I don't want anything. anything. You know, if, if, if I break even, even or lose a little bit of money, money hey, it's, it's a great season. season you know what I mean? Right. And uh, it's, it's, it's sad because, because you've seen that sport kind of take that transition. Yes. Where now the good kids have to be kind of financially backed. Those families are investing in that. So, so it becomes like a business. Out the top and be for practice, practice to get better. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, you know financial, financial backing, backing now helps you. Back, back then, then, it was, it was like, like it, it didn't really matter. matter. It, it didn't matter whether you came from a family that, that, that was financially wealthy or didn't have any money, money. lower middle class or lower class. You know, it was like, if you can hang out of your bank, that's all that mattered. Yep. So there's been some real, you know, and, 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 and that's, that's probably, probably the, I would call the evil, evil side, side of the sport, sport, you know, where, where I, don't I don't like to see you go. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm trying, trying to be that old guy, guy right? That old school guy, guy like, hey, look. Yeah, you're you rocky in the gym. Like you had yeah. the yeah. basement so, just trying to train kids. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, we got a 60 by 18 in the basement for my son and I. I do privates down there. And, you know, I don't want anything from anybody. You know what I mean? Like, there's a kid, there's a kid that I trained from downtown Cincinnati. It's. He's a 10 size 10 shoes, shoes, you know, and his were getting tight on him. I'm like, take them, man. Don't, don't, don't worry about, about it. Just, it's just a pair of shoes, shoes you know what I mean? mean? Right. You can have them, you know? Um, it's funny you say that because, like, just a little bit about me. So I personally rock uh, Matt Flexers. So if you don't know what Matt Flexers are, they're like the $20 shoes you get at Dick's. They're nothing special. Right. But I have a closet full of, like, $120 Nikes, you know, whatever – Super freaks. I got a closet full of them, never worn before. And my goal is to, like, when I actually step out of college and just, like, start my own club teams and everything, I'm doing it in inner city with the kids who don't maybe have that much money. And if any kid yeah. needs a sh- pair of shoes, you know, I'll just, if he earns that shoe, I'm like, just give him, like, whatever shoe he wants. You know, I have a whole yeah. closet full of expensive shoes for some kid in the future. And that's what I'm trying to do. Like, I just want to show kids you don't need good shoes. I have Matt Flexers, they're $20. Yeah. I want nationals in them. But I have these great shoes if you want them. Exactly. But we could definitely talk about this. And it sounds like we're of the same mindset. But kind of like I want to kind of get through a list of these questions I have for you. So my first question, probably one of the ones I'm more excited about is, uh, so you've gone through the gamut. Do you have any advice for young wrestlers starting their college careers, a.k.a. like what's your best dad advice for like, you know, your newcomer? Yeah, yeah, so, so that's, that's really, really easy. So, uh, and, and I'm, I'm sure Beachler said, said this to them, them but I kind of lived it. it. You know, there's three things in college. You got, you got grades, you got wrestling, you got, you got social, social life. Mm-hmm. And the, the rare, rare, the rare of some, some of us can do two of them. But I've never seen someone do three and be good at it. And I mean, if you do that third one, you're taken away from one of the top two. You're at school and you're paying for a very expensive education in Ohio Northern. Yes. That's one. one. If, if you're going to be a wrestler, wrestler that's, that's the second one. one. And, and where you're always not going to be able to keep, keep up with maybe the friends that you have in the dorm or, or, or on campus or in classes, it's going to be that social part of it. Mm-hmm. So it, go ahead and, and know that you're making that sacrifice now to make sure that those first two, you're becoming better at all times. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, my, my joke is, is you have all your life, and now at 46 years old, right? You have all your life to drink Corona Light beer, right? Yeah. Uh, Bud, Bud Light, Light beer, whatever your taste is. is. Um, and, and you have, have all your life to kind of party and kind of chase, chase pretty girls, you know? know? Uh, you have all your life to do that. that. And, and, you know, you got, it, it's, it's a four to five year, you know, time frame for your college career, and you just got to really grasp it. And when you're there in the middle, it seems like it's taking forever. You know, the grind of practice, the grind of beats. It seems like it takes forever. But, but soon enough, enough you'll, you'll be on the outside, outside looking in going, going, man, did I take advantage of that time? Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing. And um, I think the thing I did the best is I knew what two I needed to be. And I was very disciplined. I stayed away from having a drink or or partying at all during during season and even out of season too. But, you know, you just got to really concentrate and dedicate yourself to those two and then just trust the program you're in. Because, because sometimes, sometimes you know you get in there, there and it's, it's difficult, difficult for these guys, guys coming from high school where they're the big fish in a little pond. pond. Mm-hmm. You know, you come, you come into a college team; these all these guys are good. All these guys, yeah, are everyone awesome. earned all a right to wrestle in college. college. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, you, you find, find yourself as a freshman or maybe even a sophomore. Man, I'm getting banged up. I'm not starting, but you just got to trust the program. You got to stick with what you've done. What you've, what you've done, done in the past, past continue to get better from the guys, guys in the room, room and then trust, trust the program that, hey, that sophomore year, that junior year, your, your opportunity is going to come and you're ready for it. Yes. Uh, That's a great point you make because how I see it is you got to pay your dues. If you got to start from the bottom and make your way to the top. Now, if you start at the top on the team, if you're the freshman kicking everyone's butt, then you're probably on the wrong team. 
You didn't right. pick like a wrestling team that can push you because it's almost worse to be the best one in the room. It really is because right. you have no one to push you. You just push everyone else. So right. I'm with you 100 percent on that. Well, well, like, like I, I said, said, my career is unique, unique in the fact, fact that the first couple years, years I had that really strong room. room. Mm-hmm. And, then and then that, that second half, half of my career, career I was kind of that, that the, the strongest you know, guy yeah. in the room. I'm kind of helping, helping everybody else out. But, but you, you find you find, you find ways when you are the strongest to push yourself as well because you know what needs done. And I'm thankful that my first two years were the harder two that got me prepared for the for the latter two because I knew what I needed to get done. Yes. Definitely, um, and you, I mean, like, you definitely get that chance where you're the best in the room, but like, it it stinks when you're like at the bottom the whole four years. Like, you eventually uh-huh. want to be at the top, so I feel you on that. Like, getting that chance to like get your butt kicked, and then using that to improve, and then pushing other p- kids, getting the chance to kick their butts. So, right. right. Yeah, 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 but my best advice, advice is, you know, you're, you're there, there for books, books you're, you're there, there for the, the mat. Those, Those should, should be the two priorities, priorities you have. And you, you just, just gotta, gotta really, really just center yourself and understand that that, that, that things like, like you know partying or social life or even gaming, gaming you know you gaming is you know, huge yeah gaming is huge you know, you know you, that, that game, game will be there after season that, that game will be there in the summertime when you have a little bit of time mm-hmm. uh, you know just, just take it put it down you know I know the games now can can really eat up your time and eat up your dedication don't let that happen because. Your, Your time, time is, is better spent figuring out every, every day, day in the mirror what, what I can do to make myself better on the mat mm-hmm. and make myself a better student because when, when classes are all over, then we're in the real world now and we're looking, looking at making real money for, 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 for our families. Like, so that, so that dedication has to translate into the next phase of your life. life. Yeah, I feel that. And that's not, I'm not trying to scare anyone, anyone away from college wrestling all together like oh i can't go out and you know hang out with my friends like you get a chance to have some fun but just understand like priority level you have to take care of your school first to be a wrestler and after you take care of your wrestling then you get a chance to have fun with your friends don't put fun above anything else because you can always have fun later you have four years left of wrestling and then you're done you have four years left of school and then you got a degree and you move on you it, yeah, yeah, I mean, you're, you're always, always going to find, you know, you, know, you yeah, should enjoy, you, you, you should always enjoy school and wrestling. wrestling. Mm-hmm. But, but I, I, I just think that sometimes everyone tries to do all three. three. Yes. And they're trying to be really, really strong. strong. Well, well, inevitably, you know, the, the social life can pull you in. Uh, the gaming can pull you in to take up hours of your time per day. You just can't let that happen. Um, so everything's got to be in moderation when it comes to that social time and maybe that gaming time that some of the guys are kind of lured to. Okay. So kind of like going off of this a thing i see that's like a a constant problem for wrestlers especially with like a long season like it's a grind by the end of it a lot of kids kind of get mentally fatigued you know it's like they're not burnt out but at the same time they can't wait for the season to end so do you have any tips for a wrestler to kind of like stay mentally fresh kind of like yeah uh, so I, I, I was blessed i was one of those kids that you know i'd always wrestle 100 125 matches 150 matches sometimes all year long because i wrestled off season mm-hmm. and i was year round you know i specialized in wrestling was my my key i didn't have too many other sports kind of pull me away from that um and i didn't i never really went through a burnout i think i went through times where things got tough my body was banged up i needed a little bit of break uh, but i didn't go through too much burnout I think, I think the, the biggest, biggest thing, thing for some, some of the guys is, is I think it's important that you have that high school coach mm-hmm. or maybe that, you know, maybe your dad or another high school athlete or another athlete that was on your team that's wrestling in college too, that you have someone to talk to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be Coach Beachler or one of the coaches that on the Northern staff or even one of the wrestlers on there, uh, but just someone to kind of tell them how things are going. Mm-hmm. And, and get a, a kind of a fresh perspective. perspective. Okay. I always say get them a little, little older because they're, they're able to say, hey, look, and then they've done that, that just kind of grind, grind through this. You'll do, you're sure you're doing great. great. You know, you know, get, get that, that positive, positive pickup, pickup, which sometimes can kind of keep that rust away and that, that right. mental fatigue. I mean, um, kind of like, I'm an education major, so I'll kind of compare this to the classroom. It's almost like the teacher saying like good job on your homework you know writing that little star giving you your little sticker or whatever you know that just that little positive feedback to keep you motivated to study a little bit more you know it stinks when a teacher just tell just gives you work and work and work and you know you get your grade and they don't say anything about it but it's different when you have that teacher who cares or someone in that classroom who's just like 
wow, that's really good. That's nice. You're doing a great job. I know it sounds corny, but like, I'm with you on that. The same train of thought. Just having positive feedback will go a long way. And just having someone to talk to and vent and whatever is always appreciated. So, and, and, and everybody's going, going through it. it. I mean, sometimes, sometimes when you get in that little rut and you're on the grind a little bit, bit yes. just know that everybody around you is going through that too. too. And, and you, you should, should feel, feel like the team is there kind of to help you through it. Mm. Um, you might not talk, talk about it, but you're all kind of going through the same thing. thing. So, so you know, you know, I always, always feel like sometimes wrestling is such an individual sport that we individualize our feelings and our emotions sometimes mm. when we're going through a long season like that. Um, and we don't really talk to the other, the other people that are going through it. Sometimes talking as a group will bring the whole group down. So I always say that you have to be really careful with that. But at the, the same, same time, time, just know, know that everybody's there trying to get you through practice, practice stay positive. Uh, don't, don't be that one that kind of pulls down a couple other guys. guys. You, you just got to be real positive and, and look at look, look at put in your news because, because again, again, next week, maybe, maybe that opportunity comes and you're on the mat, you're varsity, and you've got to be ready to go. Yeah, exactly. Here's another one I'm really excited about. So, like, you've been around wrestling for a couple of decades at this point, I assume, right? Yeah, 42 yeah, years. Yeah, that's right. a minute. <laughs> so, you yeah, know, it's funny because we'll, I wrestle some of the youth kids, and, you know, they're doing really good. And I'll say, hey, how long have you been wrestling? He'll be like, a few years. He goes, and, you know, I had a kid the other day say, well, how long have you been wrestling? I had to think for a second. I said, 42 years. And he's his eyes got big. Like, are you serious? What do you do with shoes on? Am I going to kill you? Right. <laughs> That's funny. No, but, like, wrestling is a very taxing sport on the body. Sure. So what are some, for one, one, how has wrestling affected your body? So, like, me personally, mm-hmm. I know I kind of have, like, a, I want to say bad back, but it's definitely getting tighter than what it probably should be at my age, and my hips are kind of, like, mm-hmm. out of line. So how has it affected your body? So, so I, I was pretty blessed. blessed. Okay. So like, like back, back, back and neck problems I never had. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was with a teammate, J.D. Pinkerton, who had a neck, neck injury and, and, you know, it ended his career. And he, he was an all-American kid. I mean, he was just a stud. Mm-hmm. Um, I was very blessed that I never had that, like, core injury. Okay. So my, my biggest things were um, fingers. I broke a lot of fingers. Uh, I went through tape a lot. Um, I had, I had a lot of trouble with ankles. ankles. I used to roll my ankles. Like I used to, it's just, just the way I walked. I, mm-hmm. uh, I went through cases of tape. Beach tried to buy me a case of tape every year, and I literally went through that more, taping up my shoes, taping up my fingers. Um, and then as I got a little bit older, I started I started pulling my groin easier. Um, I don't know if it's just because I'm I'm very hard on the mat, and I slam myself to the mat, and I'm my, my, my hips. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as, as I got older, shoulder and groin is kind of the thing, outside of fingers. But Yes, I definitely see that a lot with wrestlers. Like all the, you know, the, the, the wrestling mentality, mentality right? Mm-hmm. You just suck, suck it up, up buttercup, right? right? You just suck it up and, buttercup, uh, yes. And, and, and it really, I've lived my whole life that way. So, mm-hmm. you know, every once in a while I walk up, and my, my fingers, I got a couple really bad fingers. And they'll just be pounded. But, but, you know, what am I going to tell, tell my wife, you know, know complain to my wife, right. complain to my coworkers? Yeah, your fingers, like, you really can't do nothing about it. You, yeah, you just you not going to give you at work, work, you, you know, whatever you, know, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I've learned, you know, pain, your pain tolerance, uh, your your ability to kind of overlook things because you have other things more important and, and priorities outside of maybe what your body's going through. Mm-hmm. I think I've learned that for years, and I kind of live that way. Um, but, yeah, I was pretty blessed. And, and then, then as, as I've gotten got older, uh, and, and my wife is an athletic, athletic trainer and fitness guru, guru. I met her in the gym. Um, she's, she's big about stretching. stretching. That's and what I, I wanted to say. I wasn't trying to pride you yeah. to it, but like I wanted you to say those words, stretching. So, so stretching, stretching, you know, and, and, and like, it's, it's amazing because I used to think my wife was crazy, you know, we'd be going to bed or something, and she'd be stretching down on the floor like, what are you doing? You know, she's like, I'm just stretching, you know, and. But there's so much wisdom in that because all your tendons, all your muscles, everything we use, and, and as, as I, I get older, older I, just I just can't take the shoes off. I just, mm-hmm. I just can't stand there with the whistle and the clipboard and be a coach. I, I have to be a wrestler. But, you know, my feeling is, is that I can wrestle with you as a high school kid in about two minutes. And in two minutes on my feet, I can tell you how I'm going to attack you, how I'm going to get around, how I'm going to score on you. But then that I can build that wrestler into, okay, this is what you're doing wrong. 
-hmm. This is what you need to improve on. Okay, okay I'm, I'm letting, letting you shoot, shoot on the left side because you, you like, like to shoot to my right. right. Let's make sure you get something to the other side, side both sides. sides. Circle, circle around, get around. Get around. Right. Uh, you're too straight with me. But So I think my way of coaching is, is having the shoes on all the time. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, my body and trying to keep my, myself in shape and not be able to get cranked on by these high school kids that are bigger than me and stronger than me and younger than me now are in better shape too, lung wise. Yeah. You know, you know, I got to I got to keep things together, together. And, and, and I think the biggest thing is just stretching normally. And then uh, for me, you know, if my left groin hurts, I'm not doing all the warm ups. You know what I mean? And I'm leading with my right because I'm not getting my left ripped up. You know what I mean? If they shoot it with that left one, it's going to hurt a little bit. Um, so, you know, I mean, there's just different things as, as kind of more the cultural that I don't have to really concentrate. And, and I can, can kind of work, work myself through mm -hmm. than when those, those days, days of true, com true, you know, true, true competition, competition when, it's, when it's my weekend, yeah. you know? Yeah, because you're probably like the third or fourth guest I've had in a row that says stretching important, stretching is important. So I really want to, like, hammer on these guys that stretching is huge. Like, a lot yeah. of these, like, especially in college, like, when I was in college, I could just, like, wake up from my nap, my go straight yeah. to practice put my shoes on and go like i didn't need no warm-up didn't need a stretch i didn't feel that it helped but like yeah, yeah. as you get older that starts to wear and tear on your body so you need to start preparing for the long term if you don't want to be walking around with like a little cane and crutch at the age of 30 so yeah, right. stretching yeah. is huge i want everyone to so just think, think as you get older, older you're the tin man, man and you, you gotta, gotta have the oil before, before you can even do anything, anything. yes yeah, that, that oil is gonna, gonna be stretchy, stretchy. Uh, when, when you're younger, younger man, man, you just, just hey, man, just yep. uh, they call my name, I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? Jump around, bounce, bounce, bounce for a minute, boom, boom you're on there. Yes. I mean? Shoot, Shoot, I'd have to warm, warm up for two hours, hours in the back before I got out there. That's how I feel right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, the guys love, so my high school guys love wrestling. You know what I mean? They love having a coach on the mat. You can tell some kids never have that, and when they get it, it's, it's a, a different, different it's a different, different process for them to learn, learn on. Um, so, so I got a couple right now, a couple seniors from uh, uh, South Dayton that, that you know, it's, it's all about, about well, come on, coach, you yeah. ready to go? Yeah. You know, and they're talking yeah. me up. Yeah, and they're trash talking. Back. Like you're getting old. Don't get me wrong. I take care of business. You know what I mean? But at the same time, they're ready for it. They like it. They have fun with it. You know what I mean? They want to see if they can get me. You know what I mean? So, but at the same time, I'm always, I'm constantly doing something with a purpose. Yes. So I'm, I'm leading one way. way. I'm, I'm, I got my, my butt up a little bit where you should hit an ankle pick on me. Yeah, there's always kind of that your coach behind like you. You're leading him through a, yes. a, through a life. Like you know what you're giving up and you're waiting for him to take the bait. Even though it's like a good move, you're just waiting for him to do what you want him to do. Correct. I feel yeah. that. I do that a lot. I Maybe not so much with the high school kids, but like the, like the younger the kid is, like the more I can like lead him to what I want. I want him to start practicing his single leg on the left side. So, you know, maybe I'm just leaving that elbow out a little bit too much. I want him to notice that. It's kind of yeah. like, it's still learning. It's 100% coaching through physical activities, see, do kind of thing. So I'm with you on that. I, 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 well, I, I think, think it's realistic. realistic. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we can, we can show, show kids a million, million different, different ways to do a move. Mm -hmm. But when, when they get under, when when they get under the light, light, sometimes things, things you, you have to have reactionary. It has, it has to be reactionary. reactionary. It, it can't, can't be like, like okay, one, one, two, three, four, four five, five steps. Step. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you're going to feel a little different from each different opponent. It's going to give you different pressures, different leads, different steps. I mean, you have to be able to recognize that. that. And I think the biggest thing is coaching that way. You want to give them different mixes. You know, you want to go a little higher in your stance sometimes so they can take the shot. You want to stay a little lower, see if they can snap you down. That, that they, they can, can notice those things and practice through live with you as a coach to kind of guide them. Mm -hmm. So then when they see it in a match, boom, boom they're hitting it. And, see, and I think sometimes that muscle memory learning like that is better than showing a seven-step double leg finish. finish. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that goes a lot with, like, the humble factor you were talking about earlier because I've been with coaches kind of both camps where, like, one will, like, is trying to help me get better. You know, I can see, like – I can recognize he's like taking it easy. I can recognize he's stepping a little bit too far forward. I can recognize he's doing all these things on purpose. But then I was also had the coach where like, as soon as you take him down, well, you better hope time's up because he's turned around and trying to he's trying to take you down for real now. Now it's a live go, <laughs> all no hearts, no holds barred. So I've yeah, seen yeah. both coaches, and I appreciate the one that's more humble and lets me try to do things on purpose. 
Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, there's there's, there's no, no you know, you know what I always tell tell, tell my guys. guys uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually helping with the Dakota West, West High School this year. Is there's there's no scoreboard. I mean, so if coach taking you down, no big. There's there's no scoreboard in here, and this is where I want you to get taken down. Out there, we're gonna make you so good that you don't get taken down out there. At, at, on, on the mat, mat time, time. Mm -hmm. so old school board let, 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 let's go no pride see if he can come get me you know what i mean and if we go live and, and then i'll turn it up you know what i mean yeah and there's time i'll turn it up and there's times i'll just kind of i'm coaching as i go make sure you finish here drive elevate the leg don't get into that funk you know what i mean there's different things i'll say as i'm going and i'm loud i'm naturally loud which which seems to help coaching a lot right doesn't hurt and a, and a lot, lot of coaches, coaches you know, I've seen where, where you know, I've coached, coached the first time with a couple of coaches, coaches that they're, they're not used to it. it. You know, they're, they're not they're not used to seeing another coach on the mat telling a kid as they're getting taken down, down what they need to do to finish. finish. Uh, but, but you know, it's, it's just a different style, and I'm just I'll probably always be that style only because I just wrestled so much, and that's how I learned. You know, in live situations, I had coaches that kind of did the same thing to me, and now that's that's what I feel coach good coaching is. Now, how 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 do you think your wrestling has changed since you stepped away from the mad competition into the coaching role? Like, have you noticed a difference in your style? Have you noticed an improvement? Have you noticed any of those things? Yeah, yeah I, I think, think and I, I learned it probably in my second half of college, college but now, now I'm really that way. way. Is, is when, when I drill, drill I drill at 60, 65 percent. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a real, real smooth. Kind of, kind of more dance, dance steps, step, smooth smoothness. It, it's, it's a cleaner drilling style, style rather than kind of muscling around and and and, and, and using more than than more energy, energy as a drilling. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing is I can practice one to two, especially, especially as an old guy, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm just drilling at 65, then when I go live, I got a full tank of gas. But my drilling style is more smooth and polished. I'm. You know, I was 150, 157 in college. Now, now my weight's around 185, 190, so I wrestle some bigger guys. Mm -hmm. I wrestle a little bit more square stance, a little bit more power. Okay. Um, uh, I wrestle a little lower than I used to. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that just comes with age. And, and I always tell everybody, too, sometimes if you think for a moment I'm not getting better, even at 46 years old, wrestling with, with you every day, mm -hmm. you're wrong. Because I, I get, get better, better every day, too. too. And, and sometimes it's not in the same ways. ways. Like, no one's showing me move. It's, it's just being in that situation and knowing how I attacked it. Or, or trying something different. different. Mm -hmm. Because now, you know, you know it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. I, I can try pretty much anything. anything. As long yes. as I'm not trying to get, you know, I don't want to get anyone hurt. But at the same time, you know, every situation as a coach, now i got little different things. And I always say that when you coach something, you got to know it inside and out. you got to know every corner for it. So, so uh, this is when, when you just wrestle, wrestle you're reactionary. Mm -hmm. uh, but as a coach, you know every step of the way. Yeah, everything where it needs to be. You've, you've been there a million times, and, you know, and, and, and I'm still learning uh, because I'm still in situations, situations again, again and again and again, and I know what works for myself. And it's funny. So, it's funny you say that because something we've started to like, at least me personally, trying to bring into the ONU room, is like when we show a new move, whatever we do on our feet, like. The next time we were reviewing that move, instead of me saying, hey, guys, remember we did this, check, you know, you grab the arm, do this. Instead of me explaining it, I'll pull one of the guys up for and his partner up. I'll be like, you guys come up here, show the, the team what you're doing and explain it out loud. So yeah. essentially, I'm trying to get them to coach the whole team. And a couple yeah. of kids already, they're like, I know the move. And as soon as they come up and try to explain it out loud, they're like, I I don't know. I just attack, and I'm like, okay, well, what are your, what's your footwork doing? And I'm like, um, I step. <laughs> so yeah. it's funny watching like wrestlers who are not used to explaining what they do, like actually think through the process of what is essentially coaching for us, but just right. like verbally and verbally saying out loud what they're doing and understanding what they're doing for a purpose. So like, I think coaching is once you get to that level where you're coaching something, it completely changes your understanding of wrestling. Like you, is more, like you said, less reactionary, more in-depth understanding. And once you understand the move entirely, it becomes like a whole nother level of skill, whole nother level of ingenuity, I guess you could say. You, get, you become better at what you're doing just for the fact that you're teaching it to someone else. 
No, no, no doubt about, about it. it. I, I, I always joke that, that I can beat myself. myself right? <laughs> I can't. 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 I now, that 22-year-old was way too fast and way too strong. I'm going to be honest about it. Mm-hmm. But skill level, I'm telling you, I think I think the skill level, I might even have a little bit more tricks in my bag now. Mm-hmm. Maybe if I need them, right? Like, I, I have to be slicker. I have to, you know, my setups are way better. Like, I got to bring somebody close because, you know, I might pull a groin getting there. You know what I mean? So. Uh, uh, but yeah, yeah that's, that's my joke. Is I, I, you know, I, I still think I can beat him. him. And I'll, I'll say that probably, probably till I'm 65, right? right? Yeah, I still think I can beat him. him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. I say, in different words, I pretty much just say the same thing. So I always joke around and be like, "Well, I suck. I know how I suck, and I could beat myself if I ever had the chance because I know I sh- I know all my weaknesses. I know right. why I'm bad, and everyone, like that's being a national champ. Everyone's like, think I'm just playing around, but no, I'm being dead serious. I know why." I do things because I know where my flaws are and know where everything is. I'm picking apart my strategies all the time, just kind of like in retrospect, thinking about how I could improve. So it's funny you say that because I'll probably be there in 20 years. Be like, I could beat him. I could. <laughs> I, could, I, could, I, could I can take, take him down. down. That's no yeah, problem. Yeah. Yeah, he ain't nothing to me. <laughs> uh, so, what do you miss most about competing? Uh, I, think I think competition, competition itself is, is one of the things as you get older. Um, and when, when you've gone through wrestling and wrestled all your life, your life I think competition was the biggest thing. Um, uh, you, know, you know, I found myself at like 30, 40 years old just really, really, really missing things. And um, I was in new home sales and things kind of slowed down in 2008 with sales. And um, I was just, I, I gained a lot of weight and I was looking at getting in a gym and I was coaching one of the local high schools here and I had one of the wrestlers who trained at an MMA gym. gym. Mm-hmm. And of course, they're like, hey, you know, we need a wrestling coach. We want to come in and show some things. So then I started working out with these guys. And then suddenly, hey, we got a fight next June. You want to take it? 155, you know, mm-hmm. so I got all the way down. So then, before you know it, I'm 34, 35 years old as an amateur MMA fighter. So Because why not? And, uh, and that, all, that all came from missing that competition. Like, because, because you're, you're so used, used to having something to compete for. And, and you're, you're, you know, for me, I was, I was able, able to lose weight, weight suck weight down. down. I, actually I actually got down to 145. I was way up to, you know, 220 at one, one time, all the way down, down to 145. And, you know, and, and, and then two years, years later, I'm ranked number one, one in Kentucky and Ohio at 145. Mm-hmm. And before I turned pro in MMA, so I did that stint all the way for, I fought MMA for like seven, eight years. And uh, then, then that, that, that came, came from nothing, nothing but just missing, missing the competition. competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, you know, I was, I was already, already ugly, so, you know, a couple, yeah. a couple <laughs> shots in the face, right? Right. I got, um, my ears are pretty nice. I'm afraid to do MMA. Well, well my, my ears are nice. nice. I got small ears. Uh, so that helped, you know what I mean? Yeah, I and see. Then, um, I got you. The no left one, I had to have, you know, and drain it out a little bit. But, you know, for the most part, I'm pretty blessed with with normal-ish ears. They can hear. That's what's important. But, uh, um, but so yeah, yeah, so, so I, I, I miss competition really, really bad. bad. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. the hard part about MMA is, is you know, you know, you know there's three facets of MMA. MMA. It's, it's Muay, Muay Thai, Thai, boxing, and, and, and jiu-jitsu, and, and wrestling. Uh, I had one of them. So I knew I was going to get punched in the face before I took the guy down and then tried to finish the fight. I never really studied those other facets good enough to really put myself further further along in the sport. But I really, I really enjoyed, enjoyed my amateur, amateur career. career. I, I fought, fought like 22, 23, 23 amateur, amateur fights in MMA, MMA, and I just really, really enjoyed it. Now, now pro game was a little bit more money involved, involved, a little bit more politics involved. Um, didn't, didn't really enjoy that as much as I did my amateur, amateur career. Okay. So, one of the... I'm kind of going through the experience right now myself, but, like, what's really weird for, like, any athlete, Division One, Two, Three, any sport, is, like, when you trained you know, however many years, some people their whole lives pretty much for this one thing, this one sport, this one activity. And then all of a sudden, as soon as you leave that school, as soon as you get your diploma, it's just poof, gone. And you just don't know what to do with your time. So it sounds like you found another faucet to do that. Do you know any other ways to kind of get that itch? I think, I think the, the biggest, biggest thing for us, especially, especially with wrestlers, wrestlers, I think it happens more and because you just dedicate so much to your craft at all times, mm-hmm. is that you find other goals in your life, whether it's a job, whether it's you know a promotion, whether it's an amount of money that you want to make. Um, you goal yourself or raising a child or marriage. You know, there's you 
you, you find, find the, the next thing, thing in your life that you craft, craft and dedicate yourself to get better in. Mm-hmm. And well, the, the greatest thing about wrestlers is we can always improve ourselves because we've we've, we've been, been in the down and outs. We've seen so much adversity because wrestling is coming through adversity. Yes. So there's always facets of our life that we can improve with the wrestler inside of us. Mm-hmm. And you're never going to take that wrestler outside of you. Uh, no, it's always going to be. It's always going to be there. And that competition, that drive. Uh, it's, it's funny because my wife always, my wife will always say that you're the best husband when you're coaching. And and what she means by that is she knows that that's a need I have. Like I invest myself into coaching the kids. I enjoy that part of it, and I'm a better man when that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, think I think the, the biggest thing, thing that we can do is we can find the next thing in life that we dedicate that same passion, emotion, uh, and dedication and drive to uh, the next goal of what we're doing, what we're doing in life. And, you know, that's why we always joke, if we can hire, you know, work here, if we can hire wrestlers, we'd, we'd be great, right? Yeah. Only because we know the type, the type of people they are, yeah. what they've come through, what they've gone through, the type of passion and, and dedication that you bring to work every day, that you bring to life every day. Almost borderline <laughs> obsession. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's just, we're all a little bit crazy. Yeah, that's why you're just doing what type of crazy right? are you? I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, I mean, that's the biggest thing is, once that competition is gone, you got to find a replacement, whether it's a goal, work, family, kids. I mean, I, I, think I think the biggest thing, thing is you got to find that thing to dedicate the same passion to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you don't, you're going to have a little trouble. Um, you're going to find yourself maybe working out, but just you're, you're there at the gym, but you're not really there. We've all been there before, right? Yeah. I don't feel like it's in. It's like, you know what? Because you don't have that next need to kind of train for, you know? Um, but I always say you got to find that. you got to be able to have that. One, one thing, thing that's something to drive, drive towards, towards that goal, that, that achievement. achievement. And, and when, when you, you get it, you gotta find the next, you gotta find another one. one. Don't, don't, don't wait around. What's, what's the, the next thing, thing, right? Yes. So, kind of a good transition to my next question. How has wrestling helped you post college? Yeah, yeah I, think I think the, the biggest thing, thing is just, just that drive. drive. Mm-hmm. I mean, wrestling, wrestling creates, you know, it, it creates that drive and emotion into the next thing. So, um, you know, I was in new home sales for 20 some years, and now I found myself a couple of years ago with a partner. We've opened up our own company. Mm-hmm. We build five to eight homes a year. Um, so the, the hardest day at work is not even close to the easiest wrestling practice. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, nothing that you can, none of the adversities you kind of go through compared to the, some of the, the toughest things that you went through in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I always say work is easy. I find, I find myself, myself, you know, I can, I can do 60, 60 hours stand on my head because, because you're, you're just so used, used to that grind. grind. Yes. Are you um, familiar with, uh, like, David Goggins and his whole uh, cookie jar theory, I guess you could say? So yeah. David Goggins is, like, this exceptionally hard-minded individual. He runs, like, 100 miles every weekend, something crazy like that. But he always talks about having, like, all these things that you've done in the past, all these really hard accomplishments you've done so like for us wrestlers you know it might be a really hard weight cut it might be you know a especially hard tournament it might be whatever you have but like just keeping those in the back of your head so anytime you come up to a different obstacle that you don't know you can overcome you just kind of pull out you know a memory from your cookie jar and you're just like well this isn't nothing compared to that one time where i already did this so like just kind of like having all these all these cookies in your cookie jar makes like life afterwards so much easier it's kind of like is that the same premise what you're trying to get to oh absolutely and, and you know so i, 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 I was in the days where we cut a lot of weight yes know? back in the days and, before uh, alpha testing you know, i still you know when, when, even my mma career, career I, I knew how to cut, cut a lot of weight you know, I, I'd, I'd make 145, 145 and i'd weigh 170 by the time at the cage the next day so those hard lessons of cutting weight and hard workouts um you know, you know, a lot, a lot of times, times we, we, we had three-hour three practices because I needed to get five or six uh, pounds of water, water off before, before we got into the, the next, next day, which is going to be make weight, weight day. Mm-hmm. So, so I think some of that weight cut, that, 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 that really fashioned hard, made, made things hard. hard. Mm-hmm. Um, now, the older I got as a wrestler, the less and less I cut weight because I could enjoy practice a little bit more. I think I cut too much weight when it came to high school, but in college, 
uh, Beach would help me. Um, going from 142 my first two years to 150 was the smartest move I made. Mm -hmm. I put on muscle, I cut less weight, I could enjoy five days of practice before I got on the mat uh, on the weekend and did my thing. And like we kind of continue that, especially with the whole alpha testing. So like alpha testing is like, you know, your hydration, all that stuff, preventing you, legally preventing you from like cutting too much water weight and dropping to a weight class you shouldn't be in. Now, we kind of felt like we were all the same mindset where cutting weight makes a a wrestler real gritty and losing that weight cut lost a little bit of that grit so what we've done in exchange for that because we don't think anyone should be cutting weight what we've done now is actually started implementing like a 10 mile run where like wrestlers like it's not so much for conditioning obviously you have to be somewhat conditioned to run 10 miles but like say a heavyweight when's the last time you ever heard of a heavyweight running 10 miles they don't think they can until they do and then after that point the rest of the year they're like well it wasn't as hard as that 10 mile run you know so like that's their cookie jar instead of the weight cut we found like a safer more valuable method to keep them not only healthy but to give them that same grit that same mentality the mental fortitude that we wanted from you know past generations past decades so yeah that's kind of my little disclaimer. We don't cut weight anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I know. <laughs> and it, it, it's nice. I mean, I, mean, I, I think, think that's where, where the sport, sport has to go. go. Yes. Yes. Just, just for safety. Safety I mean, and just to help grow the sport. Because who wants to join right. a sport where you know you're going to be suffering the entire time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, 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 was, it was part of the things people, people looked down, down on. Uh, oh, oh the, 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 you know, they all talk about in high school, the wrestlers used to be running in trash bags. Yes, that's the stereotype. You don't, you don't want, want that, that stereotyping. Stereotype yes. You don't want that, that, that vision. So. No, I think it's good for a sport that we have this whole hydration level and everything because at least on an Olympic level, it doesn't look like the – like our wrestlers are about the same size as everyone else's with those whole hydration implements, you know what I mean? So, like, with all this right. testing, they don't have to cut as much, and they're all the same size, so why bother going down a weight class if you're going to wrestle the same guy? Right. So yeah. – Mm. all right so here's a a funny one that i've i've seen go two one of two ways so like dieting when you have a good wrestler who's done everything right for however many years up into college once they're done with college i've seen it go two ways either they stay in shape and like they're always in shape or you know they kind of enjoy themselves a little bit more and they balloon up so what are some tips that you kind of have for any wrestler once they're done competing to kind of like keep your weight under control yeah, yeah I, think I think the, the biggest, biggest thing, thing is, is you know diet, diet especially if, you know from that older group you cut a lot of weight mm-hmm. diet, diet, that's, diet, diet now, now means something different than it did when I was, when I was a wrestler, wrestler. Mm-hmm. Diet, I, I, I dieted to make weight as a wrestler, wrestler. Now, now diet, diet is, hey, you're, you're fueling the machine. machine. you got to put the right things in the machine to get the right results out of it. Um, so, so, I mean, diet now, now for me, uh, and I've teeter-tottered. You know, I've gone, gone from, you know, I always, I always feel great, great right in that 180 to 190 range, range but, but if I get to 300, I'm like, man, Joe, you're now I'm five eight and a half to keep shrinking, right? As I get older, I think Beach will have me like five, nine and a half, and now I'm like an inch less now, you know? So... So, so, you know, know my, my height's going down and my, and my belly's getting, getting bigger, bigger but, you know, so, so I think, think the biggest thing is just to keep yourself in, in, for, for longevity, you know, and now we look, at, I look at diet as the smart things to, to, to make sure that, hey, you know, I get to 65, I get to 70, and I'm, I'm healthy and I'm happy versus, you know, when we're, when we're athletes, we always think of dieting to make sure that we're okay for making weight next week. Okay. There's definitely two different, you know, diet means different things now than it did you know, you know my, my first, first 23 20, years. years yeah um, i'm with you on that so kind of transitioning from your mindset instead of thinking like oh, i don't need a diet because i don't need to lose weight trying to think well mm-hmm. in the long term it's going to cut your life down a lot more if you're diet not dieting healthy if your diet isn't healthy but move, move on so these are the two questions i'm sure you're excited about so pre-match jitters those butterflies in mm-hmm. your stomach yeah yep. How do you shake them? How do you get rid of them? What's the advice you give to your wrestlers when they're nervous? So, so you know, I, I always, I always tell, look, look there, 
you're, you're getting, getting ready to step, step on your, your, your zone. zone. This, this is your mat. mat. You, know, you, you got to have, have that mentality, mentality that this, this, this is my, my work zone. zone. Um, go, go out there, there with confidence in it. In it. Um, there there shouldn't be jitters if you prepared. I always say, and sometimes if you're not nervous or have some jitters, then there's something wrong with you in this sport. It's it's only natural that you feel that way. Get the part of that's getting ready to go mentally. Um, but, but, you know, the, I, I think, think the biggest thing that I made and what I, what I try to explain to, to, to kids is that you're getting ready to go out on your mat. You have to control the mat. You have to take the match to them. Mm-hmm. Um, they, and if you're going to do that, there's nothing to be nervous about. Yeah. Just go do it. Um, and, you know, you train all week for this time. That's what's making it. That's what's making you nervous. That's what's giving you a little bit of jitters. Now let's go out and do it. You know, mm-hmm. hard work and ready, ready to pay off. This is the time where you're able to show everybody who you are, what you can do, and prove to yourself. You know, yeah. Make yourself the better wrestler. Get, get yourself the first place. You know, win your varsity spot, whatever it's going to be. But I really didn't have too much of that. I think uh, jitters, um, the more you wrestle, the less jitters you got. Yeah. Uh, the, the biggest nervous time I had was my national finals match, which... You yeah, know, like if you don't have jitters, there's something, something's wrong. Yeah, like, yeah fifth, fifth, fifth year, last, last probably, probably my last match, match of my career. career. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're nervous. You know, you're, you're, you're naturally, naturally nervous, nervous, and you're you're, you're there excited to, to, to win, win that. Match. The best advice I was always I've ever given or received, I should say, for jitters was like, if you're nervous, if you got those butterflies in your stomach, that just means you think you can win. You don't get nervous for matches you think you're gonna lose, and you don't get match nervous for matches you know you're gonna win. So if you right. think you're nervous, you're probably thinking you can win. So, next question. The imp- I, gotta, I, gotta I gotta watch my, my time a little bit. bit. I gotta my, my, my daughter's, daughter's little, little. Oh yeah, we can't hold her up. Just, I, I, we'll numbers. make this one the last one. I know this is the one you were excited about. That's so okay. yeah, the importance of mindset when training. So yes. uh, you can yeah. go whatever way you want with that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think the hardest, hardest the hardest thing to, to, to tell a young wrestler is, is you know, know there's always a, there's confidence and there's and you know, there's there's arrogance and you got to be able to walk the fine line on it a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, so I was always one of those wrestlers that I went out expected to win, um, and I, I think my high school years I came into my program and I was like I said I got third in state my my freshman year. Everyone expected me to win. Um, so, so then, then I expected myself to win. Mm-hmm. So, so it was only preparing, preparing myself to do what I needed to do, get, get my job done. Um, and that that, that mindset, uh, getting, getting on, on the mat and having, having that confidence, confidence meant everything. Um, I, got I got it, it you know, as, as, as I went through college, college, it got better and better and stronger and stronger because I was just more confident in my ability, uh, speed, quickness, uh, situations, um, and, 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 and that, that just led, led to success. success. So. Okay. Now, how can you? What's your advice for helping a wrestler improve their own mindset? So, how do you ex- help a wrestler get to that mindset where like they're confident in themselves but not arrogant? Because like sometimes people they have no confidence in themselves, and it's just like, oh, I can't do this. I don't know. And then sometimes it's the other end of the spectrum where they're like, I for sure can do it, and nothing. Like it's almost too confident how do you bring them into the middle well i, th- I think the biggest thing is is to talk through it mm-hmm. especially at college you know the more uh, the more an athlete or even a high school when, when they can tell you what they're feeling mm-hmm. you can address that you can talk them through that if it's if it's you need more confidence you do that if, if he's got too much confidence say hey let's let's back off a little bit here come on here let's go through this together because there's other ways of doing it you know and and, and uh, uh, there's, there's maybe better, better ways of, of attacking it mentally and mm-hmm. physically. Um, but, but I think, I think the biggest thing is talking a wrestler through it and, and figuring out where they're at in the scale and try to get them to that middle ground. ground. And, and that, comp, you, know, you know, when, when they, they step, step out, you, you, you can, can see them hitting the things they're hitting in practice. Yes. The hardest part is you have a great practice wrestler, but you just can't convert it on the weekends. And a lot of that is that confidence that we're talking about, having them ready mentally to be able to physically do it. And this... This kind of circles back to like the first question we were talking about where you said like being able to lean on other people like we were talking about the mental drain of practice but that I mean it still circles through like the same way 
where whatever you're feeling, you should be talking to someone, whether it boosts someone else up or maybe you just need to boost it up yourself. But just having that close community of a team to help you get to the goals you want. But Absolutely. I think that is good for our podcast. It's about an hour. We might cut it down to 30. <laughs> so yeah. um, if you wouldn't mind, do you mind sign us off? Polar Bears on the Hunt. Can Polar Bears, bears on the Hunt. There you go. All right. Appreciate you, man. Have a good All day. All right. All right, Coach. Great, Great talking to you, man. man. Yeah, it was good. Tell, Tell everybody, hey. All right. Thanks. Thanks.